I want to slap a little fresh paint on this little rusty half green guy and on the front bumper make it red again. So that's what we're doing right now. I've even got the sander out already. Sand it and clean this frame around the grill. It's ready to be painted. And when I went to get the paint, the MF gray, it was actually buy one get one free. So I lucked out there. Now we just need to put some paint on it. and the paint is now drying. We're gonna move on to the bumper. Let's go paint the bumper. All right, sanded, wire brushed, washed, paint thinned, and now I'm gonna put some paint on it upside down. Painted the bottom, and when it dries, we'll flip over, we'll paint the top side. I also got my fingers painted pretty good. I don't think I like that sprayer very good. This is where we are right now. Matter of waiting for the paint to dry. And while we're waiting on that, I've also painted the grills that go back into the tractor black. Let's go check those out. Grills all nice and flat black. I might go ahead and put those in. Let's see how dry this feels. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's put the grills in. In the daylight, you can see it a little better, the gray and the black. It is all change time on the old tracker. The drain plug is back in, now we'll put the oil in. So far I've removed the throttle control and the cutoff switch and these two nuts.
Now you're supposed to see where that spring attaches. Can you see it? It's got to go right back to where it is now. The inside of the housing, that spring goes in that last hole, and then the other end of the spring goes in this top hole through this little pin with that little spring. That seems simple enough. Famous last words. On the inside where my leak is coming from, these two little O-rings are worn out. Stiff and hard. We'll trade out those two, put it back together. Maybe we can get rid of all that leaking. These two little O-rings go inside these little holes. Just like this. But first they've got to go on the shaft. I've already replaced these two. We're about to replace the other two. Taking off the old O-rings. They just crumble and break. Now we'll put on the new ones. Gets a little bit of a pain, but I got the first O-ring on and the second O-ring has been started. One more groove and we've got it. Okay, it's in. We can start putting this thing back together. Got my gasket surface area cleaned. Got my gasket. I'm literally going to put this thing back together now. Okay, so my fuel distributor has been put all back together and the next thing to do would be to prime it. Get all the air out of it. That'd be here. And then see if it works. There's the fuel distributor a couple weeks later. Look down the ground. There's no drips. I guess that's mission accomplished. So just the other day I was using the tractor and the fuel filter sprung a leak. We're going to change that right about now. And the good news, I had one in stock waiting. Let's get it on. Okay, to remove this fuel filter, there's a bolt in the very top. It's kind of fun to get to. Kind of looking at that filter thinking maybe it was time for a change. I'll clean up this bowl. We'll put the new filter in. Okay, so I've cleaned up the bowl that goes on the bottom of the filter. It's clear. You can see through it. You can see if there's any issues going on. There's a drain in case you get something in there you don't want. Some kind of contaminant. Water, dirt, whatever it is. Okay, with his gaskets, there's an O-ring that goes Underneath, there's a little stem under here where the O-ring goes on. Gasket number one is in place. Filter, we can start filling it up. It's in place and held on by that little O-ring. Got your 
bowl. Okay, I just put a couple of gallons of diesel in the tank. I've got the bolt out of that line. And there is a lever on the side of the fuel pump for pumping fuel. Priming purposes. Bleeding lines. I'm seeing bubbles. Are you seeing bubbles? And we'll put the plug back in. Here, let me show you the bottom of the fuel filter of that bowl. You can look in and see how clean. You can see the diesel in there. You can see a mosquito just landed in that diesel. Not very smart. Crystal clear. I just wanted you to see that. It is that point where I hit the switch and we're going to see if it fires up. So my fuel gauge don't work because the float in the tank has a hole, it's full of diesel. It won't float if it's full. And I've got this old Volkswagen float. This goes inside the carburetor. I don't see why that won't work. That one's made for a gas. This tractor's a diesel, but it should still float. See what I'm thinking? When I priced the float for this tractor, they wanted $19 for it. I'm gonna see if I can fix it for free. So here's the stock float that does not float. Pop it off, drop it in the tank, no just kidding, save it for later. This is the VW carburetor float, clip it on, and I've got some copper wire. With a little bit of finagling, I believe it's going to go in. Just like that, and we'll put the bolts back in it, put the wire on it, see if it works. There's only about two gallons in a 10 gallon tank. Hopefully it shows something on this gauge. That is the first time I ever remember it working in my whole life. Love that. So now that the fuel filter has been changed and especially the sending unit is now fixed, I think it's time to put the hood on. So here's a handful of bolts and washers that I found laying around in the garage. As soon as I get these in, I'll probably find the original bolts. Or I'll just buy some. That's what I'm looking for if you've got some laying around. What we have here is a broken off disc, but don't worry, I've got a new one. I'm going to be putting it on.
Now, and then one more piece, and this is done. This goes right there. So the wheels on the tractor, you can see the yellow coming through, and I've got some paint to fix that problem. We might spray a little on the front wheel right now. Call this a test run until I get some masking tape. It looks a little better. So I have just finished painting both the front and the back wheel. I really like it. And I'm going to do something that you don't see very often on a tractor. I'm going to put some tire shine on the tires. You know, for YouTube purposes. It's a worthy cause. First, let's pull that tape off. Out here with the tractor and one of the headlights is burnt out. And I found a new headlight. This is at the big box store on clearance. It is a landscaping light, but it's a 12 volt. I believe it's the right size. We're gonna try it out. And the good news is, no tools required. So here's the old light holder, the old burnt bulb, and the new bulb. They look like they're the same size. Now the old bulb was high beam, low beam. The new one's just gonna be low beam, but better low beam than no beam. And the other side will still have high beam. There it is. There's my low beam wire. And then my high beam wire, I'm gonna tape it up. Here's the light in the back. It does not work. The wire has to be rerun to it. There's that bulb. So good news, the light on the back of the tractor works again. Gotta love that. So I'm out on the tractor doing some finishing touches. I've got this switch. I'm gonna hook it up here. The old switch died, it goes in that hole. I'll be right back with you to show you how it works out. And so here it is. Now the switch works. Morse code. That's, thanks for watching. And here's the final look at the tractor with the wheels all painted. I really like that look. Should have done that years ago. I even painted that hydraulic steering cylinder, the one right here, and the air cleaner lid. And you've seen the plows, you've seen the mower. Here is the box blade. I should probably show you the box blade in action. Let me see if I can think of something to do with it. Hang in there.